In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to add a table of contents to your website posts easily and for free. I recently did a tutorial how to do this with the new Elementor table of contents widget. This is not that. This is a free table of contents plugin that you can use if you don't have Elementor Pro or if you're not using a page builder at all. In the example in this video, I'm using Gutenberg and I'll show you how to create a table of contents for that. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below this video. I try to answer them as best I can. My name is Bjorn Allpass from WP Learning Lab where we help you get better WordPress so you can earn more for yourself, for your customers, and for your business. If you haven't done so yet, make sure you click subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any future videos. And we're getting started on this video right now. So we have this sample post here. It is a fairly long post and it has some headings, the dark, large black font, those are the headings, and some subheadings that we see here. And I want to create a table of contents and I don't want to spend all day doing it. There's a manual way with HTML and CSS and using anchor tags. The HTML and the anchor tags create the functionality. The CSS creates the styling to, to fix the appearance or improve the appearance of the, the, the table of contents. And that's fine doing it that way, but then you have to do it manually for every single post. If you have a website with a lot of posts, you might not want to do that. So let's do it the easy way. Let's go to our dashboard. Let's go to plugins and add new. Let's look up table of contents. The one I want to use is this one over here. If we look at it, if you do any research at all about table of contents, you will see, hang on. Last week, this was tested with, with my current version. So this, this should be updated. They are, Steven is pretty active in updating us. So that should be updated. Last week it was, like I said. But if we see down here, this easy table of contents is a fork of table of contents plus. This is one that you see recommended all around the blogosphere for a great table of contents plugin. The problem with that one is what we just saw on this plugin as well. This one's not been updated, but this one's not been updated for way longer. This one's been four years since the last update and still 300,000 in use. So it's probably not breaking anything, but it's been not been updated for a really long time. This one, it's been nine months. And like I said last week when I was playing this tutorial, I did not get this message. So this week I do. Uh, anyway, I'm gonna install it. Smart thing to do before you install plugins is back up your site. Link to the tutorial up above and the description down below to help you do that because you never know what'll happen. It's great to have a backup. And now if we head into settings and table of contents, we don't have a few options to enable this plugin. The first option is where do we want table of contents to appear? I'm gonna choose posts. I'm not gonna choose pages. I'm gonna choose the others either. You can auto insert it into posts, which I'm gonna do the position. You can have it before the first heading. So before the title of the page, after the first heading, at the top of the content or the bottom of the content. You might have to play around a little bit for which one you want. I think I want after the first heading. We're gonna see if that works out how I want it. Show when there are four or more headings present. So you have your H1s, H2s, H3 is all the way to H6. How many of those need to be on the page for this table of contents to show up? You can have it for just one, so it'll appear on pretty much every page, or more. I'm gonna choose four. You can display a header label, which means we can show header text above the table of contents. If we don't have this, it's just a bunch of links. If we do have this, we can change the header label to be whatever we want by default this table of contents. So we're gonna keep it as that. The toggle view allows people, visitors, to either close or expand the table of contents. I'm gonna keep that on. The initial view, you can initially hide the table of contents by checking this box, or you have it open by not checking this box. I'm gonna keep mine open because I want people to know it's there. You can show a hierarchy, which means if you have nested headings, they will show as indented. So if you have an H3 below an H2, that H3 will be indented in the table of contents. I believe there's an H3 in this post, so you'll see what that looks like. So we're gonna keep that checked. For the counter, this is the label for the headings. So you'd have, if it's decimal, you'd have 1.1, 1.2. If there's a nested one, then two, and then 2.1, you get the idea. I'm gonna keep mine as decimal so we can see what it looks like, but we have some other options as well. Smooth scroll enabled, I always have that enabled. The appearance I'm not gonna mess with, but we can change some appearance here if we want to change the colors. The colors are pretty rudimentary. You'll see when we install it, but you can change them all right here. You can change the advanced settings, have them lowercase. You can have hyphenations rather than underscores. 
show table of contents for the home page or not. I usually don't because the home page is usually not a place for table of contents. And there's a lot of options here. There's a lot of great explanations as you can see. I know you can read. If you have any questions about these, just leave them in the comments down below. I'll try to help you figure out what the problem is or what the, the setting means specifically. I'm gonna click on save changes. Then I'm gonna go back out to the blog post and see what our table of contents looks like. This is the home page. This is now the blog post. And we have our table of contents after our first heading. That's not where we want it, right? But here it is, here's what it looks like. Let's look more into that in a minute. First, let's go back to dashboard and settings and then table of contents. And right now the position is after the first heading. So this was the first heading. It takes the heading in the content, not the heading of the page. This is a heading as well. This is an H1, at least it should be. Let's take a look. Yes, that's the H1. And this one down here, this is the first H2. And it puts table of contents after the first H2 in the content if it's the first heading. So I'm gonna put it at the top. And I think that would be at the very top below the H1. Hopefully it's gonna squeeze it in right here. So I think that would be perfect. Let's refresh, see where it goes. And it does, puts it right there. So we have our heading, our nice big header image, our table of contents here. As we can see, these ones are indented. So these are all H2 headings, and this one is an H3. And we have our table of contents created. This is the toggle to expand it and collapse it. We can click on any one of these, and it goes right down to that section. So that's awesome. Now you might be wondering, if these are auto-created, how do I actually put the content into the table of contents? Well, we go into our post. Let's edit our post. This one is built in Gutenberg, and we have... This first one here, this is our page title. That's the H1 on the page. We have a heading here. This is an H2. We have more H2s, and these ones are H3s because those were subheadings. So now if we, let's just go back out to the post. So let's add in another heading at the very end. Let's make it number seven. Let's just call it conclusion. This is a conclusion here, but I'm gonna call it, make, make another one, just call it conclusion at the very end. Scroll right down to the bottom, click on plus if I can find it, that's good enough. Heading, let's call this conclusion. Let's keep it as an H2, click on update. Now if I refresh, conclusion will be added at the bottom of the page as a heading and it'll be added right here as a heading or as a, a link to click to as well. And there it is. Click on here, it takes us right down to conclusion. So that's the table of contents plugin, which you can use outside of the page builders. As you saw, this is built in Gutenberg and it's pretty nifty. It's also pretty rudimentary. There's not a lot of customization. Recently I published a tutorial showing how to use the new table of contents widget in Elementor. There's a link to that in the card up above and the description down below. That allows you a lot more flexibility with your table of contents. But if you're not using Elementor, or if you're not using Elementor Pro, using the free version, this is a way you can add table of contents for free using a plugin. And for me, this table of contents is good enough. It doesn't have to be anything spectacular, it just has to exist and has to be there. And if you found that useful, you're definitely gonna find this playlist useful where I show you all kinds of WordPress plugins and how you can add cool functionality to your WordPress site, mostly for free using these plugins here. So make sure you check out that playlist. If you haven't done so yet, make sure you click subscribe and the bell so you don't miss any future videos. My name is Bjorn Allpass in WP Learning Lab. Until next time, keep crushing it, and I will see you in the next video.